Bible Forum, I'm Warren Sprouse. We're here every Sunday night from 8 until 10 p.m. This is September 18th, 2018, and we're going to talk about the border a little bit. Fox Affiliate in San Diego is reporting that weeks before the media predicted, part of the immigrant caravan arrived in Tijuana. People on the Mexican side of the border could be seen on Tuesday, that was the 13th of November, climbing the fence near Friendship Park, a half-acre binational park. A few people who made it over the fence or through openings onto U.S. soil quickly ran back as Border Patrol agents approached, according to this uh, news outlet. The Fox affiliate quoted a man on the U.S. side of the border, a guy by the name of Greg Boldner, saying that he was very surprised how many people were actually here and how many different officials were here. Apparently some state and federal government types are all over the place down there. He says it seems like there's something going on. It's not normal to have this many resources tied up, he said. Now, you know, the president has ordered 5,000 military personnel to the border. Manpower, not firepower. And at issue is nothing less than our own sovereignty as a nation. There is a slim to none population, po possibility that this caravan is simply a spontaneous reaction to the poverty and persecution found in Central and South America. It's been their lot for generations, as long as I've been on the planet and longer. So why now? The old saw says, if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it's quacking, it's probably a duck. If 5,000 or more people from several impoverished countries begin a deadly 2,000 mile walk to a closed border, knowing that they're not going to get through. It stands to reason they've been given tremendous hope and help. That they would do it now at midterm election time just simply adds to the equation. And that so many Americans can be convinced it is spontaneous just fuels the equation. It isn't rational. Unlike monarchs and dictatorships, America is a nation governed ultimately by the people. Our Constitution establishes that premise. Those people in Washington are not running things. Our leaders are not free to do as they please. We have laws. We are a, we are a nation of laws. And if some of these leaders can get the people to stand against those laws, the idea is that the laws will change. American democracy is based upon the fundamental principle of one person, one boat. The simple notion that we are all equal before the law and should have an equal say over the government decisions that affect our lives. The founders created this system because they understood what happens when a few wealthy, powerful men and women gain control over a people. They had seen it as they studied history, and they had lived it, living under that kind of tyranny. And they saw what it did to nations and to people. There is was no nation like the United States of America in human history. Never. And you could argue that there is not now. There are democracies in the world. They're not like us. What these early Americans did, what they fashioned, what it continues to be is a unique system of governance. 
In this age of mass communication and highly developed technologies, a few are able to influence and direct the uneducated or the uninformed or the underprivileged in order to create social chaos. And they can do this almost on demand. The images can be manipulated. The issues can be distorted. Think about it. Do you have time and money to spend days, weeks away from your family, away from your job, to go to some other state, some other city, somewhere in the country to demonstrate against anything? And then to do this two or three or six times a year in places far from your home. Who's feeding you? The change agents in our society know that when people rise up against their government, it sends a powerful message to Washington. The same is true in state and local governments. Because elected leaders are dependent upon the voters. And these change agents know that. They derive their power from these voters. And those that get elected stay elected by pandering to these voters. It's not completely what the founders envisioned, but it is what immoral, selfish, power-hungry men and women do. And it is fast becoming more normal and more obvious in every election cycle. The technology is helping a great deal. And it's happening because this nation is governed by the people and for the people. The change agents have to get to the people. And the people they get to the easiest are the poor and the underprivileged. And the ideologues, colleges are turning them out by the, by the thousands. You see, they've taken over the education system. And they are propagandizing young heads filled with mush to view our social economic system the way they characterize it, not the way the founders envisioned it. And they have used the government to create a national so social service industry. And while it's a noble idea, it has systematically weakened the fundamental fabric of the society. The family structure. That's where the attack is focused. Kill the babies before they're born. Do away with the uh, idea that marriage is forever. Allow people just to marry and unmarry and marry and unmarry at will. Oh, let's just do away with marriage and people just live together. It destroys the basic structure of our country. Much the way they have taken over the religious system. And they've taken over the religious system because it's the Bible that says if a man won't work, neither should he eat. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. In the popular forms of so-called church today, you will find little or no resemblance to anything that you find in the Bible. Now, aside from the doctrinal issues, the structures and standards serve to use people rather than minister life and strength to them. They are largely stage shows with bands to warm up the crowd. All they need is a, a comedian. And stage lighting to create dramatic effect. And a performer who pretends to be their pastor. And I say pretend because no human being on the planet can pastor that many people. We're talking thousands of people. I pastored a church with 300. I needed help. They've got 4,000, 10,000, 
They're still pastors. No, they're not. They're just preachers. In the end, the systems are largely the same. You, you create a structure. You pander to people's felt needs. That's what we do in government. That's what we're doing in church. You take the money. You create a large system. You make people feel they're part of something bigger than themselves, something very special. You create the illusion that you are the one making their lives better. And it all works. It's just not church. And it's not government either. It's business. No more citizen legislators. It's a profession, the goal of which is simply to get elected. And once you get elected, the goal then is to get reelected. Where else can you get people to give you money in order to be elected to office, then receive a large salary for doing largely nothing? You don't have to have any training. Last election showed that. Nor experience. You don't even have to be able to think clearly. In some cases, you don't even need an average intelligence. We watched them this election cycle. It was amazing. And yet you get elected. And for the next year or two or six, if you're a senator, your job is to stay in office, whatever that takes. In the church, no more Christian shepherds, pastors, just the profession, pretending to care, but accumulating power and wealth. The large churches have staffs and ministries, and they're all there to impress people. The Bible is there to shame them into giving more money, but there's little difference between that and government. And we now have a president who appears to actually get it. These so-called immigrants are not going to get into this country. Then what? Will their benefactors step up to see that they're cared for and perhaps get them back home? Or will they walk away from them and just simply leave them to their own devices? You know, what our politicians tend to do. Use them and then ignore them. Why? Because all these people know. They know they have the power and you don't. And they also know the power they have, they don't have without you. And so you believe that they are there for you, but they're not. And while all this is going on, you are not making the progress you need to make in order to take care of yourself. Can I tell you a secret? It is a devilish plan. It's destroying families. It's destroying people. It's destroying the fabric of our society. A society founded upon the Word of God. I doubt it's God who's doing all this destruction. Who's left?